Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. Good afternoon, sir. Okay, thank you. At least it's okay, people afternoon, are listening. Sir. That's good. Uh, I would like to welcome you to this uh, class, which is Principles of Management. And it's designed for everyone who is doing a bachelor in accountancy, that they need to, or they ought to uh, study this particular module. Um, I'm sure you might also be uh, joined in by those other people who already did Oh, they're almost about to finish, but they've been told to come back and do this particular module. So those ones will join us as well. Okay, so what am I expected or what are the what is expected to be learned from this particular module? Uh, this is the module descriptor that I'm sharing. And after this, I will look at the way in which we are going to move as a class. Okay, so basically you will appreciate why this uh, particular module has been insisted that your accountancy ought, ought to take it. Uh, it's a very basic, but a very fundamental and uh, very important to groom those of you that are going to be managers in the near future. And it helps you to behave like one anyway. So we'll have uh, topic number one, talking about introduction, which is the nature of management. And that's what we're going to start with. If then you, in there, there are a number of other sub areas that are going to look at, like you'll be looking at definitions, functions of managers, uh, and uh, yeah, how management has evolved. This is number two that we're going to look at, the evolution of marketing thought. Uh, we may not look at all the schools which are, have been listed here, but we'll just look at some of them. There are quite a number of the schools there, and uh, some of them will be coming across them when we'll be talking about certain individuals that have contributed to the development of management. Then uh, we're going to look at the managerial environment. Uh, and uh, from there, we're going to look at decision making and problem solving. Um, from there, we're going to look at your planning, which is organization planning. These are like some functions of management that uh, you ought to under to know. And uh, we'll look at the organization structures, uh, organigram, so to speak, and what goes on uh, with that, things like delegation, specialization, span of control, and the whole aspect of that, we need to look at that. Then it goes on to, this is the continuation of organization design and the structure, uh, when, when we are looking at two different kinds of organization structures that exist, okay? Then uh, managing change, not as much. The, this is where we'll branch from some of these because some of them we are going to meet them in at another level. But we will spend more time on looking at the uh, functions of management itself. Most of those things that have to do with planning, staffing, uh, organizing, if you like, um, 
up to controlling. Yes, there is also staffing and the uh, HR issues or human resource issues. How people can be motivated and rewarded as employees. Yeah, that comes the issue of leadership. That comes the issue of uh, how to supervise other people and that, how to get them uh, motivated. Communication is one area which is very important uh, in the management and um, we will not spend much time looking at the communication process. I'm assuming you did that in your first semester under communication as a subject. So, but then we want to see how that can be the application of communication in an organization and how it can be used or how it is used in effective performance of the organization in order for them to achieve their objectives. Uh, we may not tackle the management in global environment. These are like um, political, economical, legal, and all those aspects because uh, you will come across this as you move on in many, many aspects. So we we'll try as much as possible to be basic, but as we meet them, we'll be able to we'll discuss them. So in a nutshell, this is what is expected. That's what we're going to, to look at uh, in this area of management. Now, in terms of assessment, you can see they're talking about uh, test one, test two, and things like that. Now, with the this advent of being on online, we might find ourselves changing uh, some of these approaches of um, assessment. So instead of um, assignment and things like that, we will be having, starting from uh, even next week, uh, or day after, since we're a bit behind time, I think I'll give you two weeks in between. Every week we'll be having uh, some quiz or test. Yeah, some quiz or test. Or I can just give you an assignment. Can you do that? Then you do presentation. Yeah. And when you say presentation, uh, if it's a, a longer presentation, then you can be a group presentation. But if it's a short one, to be individual presentation. And that entails then that everybody must be around. If you miss a, a quiz, you miss um, uh, a test or things like that, there are no such things like a makeup because nobody is going to make up the quiz anyway. It will be just one question. You're given that question, you explain yourself, you present it, and we move on to the next. And the marks are given there and then. Yeah. There will be no, no time, if you like, of uh, saying, no, you give me a makeup, this and this. No. So people must be ready and the people must be uh, participative. If we, again participating, it's you get some marks when you are participating fully in the class and in the discussion. Uh, there are some allocated marks for that. And those who want don't want to participate and keep quiet, it's as good. Yeah, I mean you are you are welcome, but it means you get zero anyway. Uh, yeah, you get zero and then uh, just work hard in the final exam. That's, we could wish you the best to do that. But the idea is that everybody must be motivated to have to participate in the discussion. Then you will appreciate how management operates. Yeah, and that's, that begins to make you, to groom you to be a manager, so to speak. Okay, so far, uh, that's what I would say. And let's see, um, there's, is there any question or any, any concern or anything that one wants to, to raise uh, at this point in time? Maybe I could pause, then we're going to be able to talk about it.
Um, sir, good afternoon. I just wanted to find out on the part for the presentations. So let's say we've been assigned or as an individual been assigned to do a presentation. Do we have to more like have a screen, the PowerPoint? I don't know how it's done. Maybe we need a phone or a camera. So are we supposed to do it in this form or maybe we make a video then post? Making a video and post is no. We need your presence. We will have questions perhaps to ask you. And uh, we need you to participate. Now let's think about the other format. Uh, the other format, uh, for example, like it is, I could do just to give you to say work on this and I'll give you 20 minutes to work on this and uh, i want you to to do the presentation the two forms of presentation there are times when i would require you to do a powerpoint presentation in which case uh, perhaps i would do, give more time but if it's a short uh, notice or a short uh, period there will be instructions your contribution by unmuting your mic and say what you're saying everybody of us will judge you whether what you're saying is sensible thing or not and the grading will be done just there and then okay so mm -hmm. thank you anything else Okay, if we, there are no questions, I'm ready to share with you the presentation for today. Okay. Uh, can I ask you, you can, you can see what I've put there as nature of management? Yes. Good, good nature of management so in this uh, module we, i mean in this chapter we want to uh, answer questions like what is really management what's involved in management yeah and why is management important for the organization anyway now uh, we are coming from a background if you like where management hasn't always been a discipline as you may have come across it or you are going to know it in the modern times it doesn't mean like that okay uh, people well people had leaders people were living individual for themselves but respecting one another not looking to one person as a supervisor and thing like that but still more they lived and they were happy anyway but as the people started producing things uh, we begin to see the need for organization for people to work together for people to achieve what they want to achieve they begin to realize that so according to peter f drucker uh, from austria this gentleman he says the majors of management is an essential a distinct and leading social institution yeah in a pivotal event in society in social history so he is appreciating that when the management began to be at play it contributed very much to uh, human beings to the existence of human being so with that in mind then we can say uh and maybe i should have asked this question before putting this what 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 is your i mean what what comes into your mind or what is your appreciation about the term management management some people start using it from the verbio point of view i managed to do this what does that mean 
Yeah, then management. So what's your appreciation? What is management? Okay, so I have an answer. Yeah, yeah, you just put, uh, you remove the, the mic and just answer. Okay, management, uh, it is a process of uh, designing and maintaining an environment uh, in which individuals work, work together in groups efficiently to accomplish the desired goals. Okay, thank you. Who said that? Arnold, this is Arnold. Arnold, you're paraphrasing somewhere. Where did you paraphrase that? Uh, from uh, a textbook. Yeah, which one? I just from Grand, I think, yeah, from Grand. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's because that's where you you are you are you are reading from. That's a good. Uh, that's good. Yeah. But I wanted your own understanding, not what that person put put in okay. there. First of all, it's your own appreciation. But think about it in terms of your daily life, for example. Okay, in my own understanding, I think the management uh, this is where an individual supervises someone's activity. Okay, so you feel like management is about supervising. You see that? Yeah. That's good. Others, what do they? What do you think management is? Um, I think management. This is simply having control or yes control over other people and over your responsibilities like you're able to take charge and carry out tasks okay you've said a few good things there uh, so as far as you're concerned uh, management is about control and controlling other people yeah of course i hope you have a good connotation of what control is because some people think of control ish. It's always like a dictatorship thing. Okay. What about the others? What is management? Uh, so, I me, mean, I think management means managing uh, your obligations or your duties concerning your life, whether it's a business or any other thing. Okay. Okay, good. I like that it's like you're looking at internal first, looking at yourself, not about the others. Yeah, okay, which is good. And somebody says uh, management can be defined as the capability to perform certain tasks or be able to control or lead a, a group. Wow, that's interesting to learn of that. Okay, good. Uh, and this is a, this one is it's not like an official definition. I, I can assure you, it's like the way you have appreciated, the way you've say, started as well. So we start by saying, is an art. Simple as that. You're looking at managing. Management as an art. Now, what do you mean? And particularly when it comes to an art, it's about the decision making. Yeah. So if it's an art and if it's a skill, the point is it can be cultivated. Eh? It can be uh, trained or learned, if you if you like. Yeah. Uh, we shouldn't then think that uh, managers is a preserve of certain people, a preserve of, and then you, you put yourself to say, no, me, I can never be a manager. Or neither those people who are managers should never be think that uh, they are superhuman. No. On the other hand, we say management is a science. Why do we say it's a science? In the first instance, it's about Uh, human feelings, human uh, perception, you know, that is what makes it to be an art. That's why we're calling it uh, uh, possessing managing skill by an individual. 
Okay. Well, as when we're saying it's a, it's a science, there are certain principles or laws that can be followed. And these principles and laws are the ones that make us to govern others. Because then we can use them and say, look, according to this principle, according to this law, this is how it should be done, or this is what should be done. That is why it's also called a science. So principles and laws are involved into it. And you apply that to the people that you're looking after or the, the group. Now, Rafa C. Davis says management, him looks at uh, management as the function. Now he was looking at it from a, a, a top management. He says it's a function of executive leadership everywhere. So if you're a leader, Management is one of the functions that you perform, according to Davis. Yeah. Now, um, the best, one of the ways in which for us to appreciate, I want to take it from, remember somebody who said for him, managing is about managing your affairs. you yourself yeah Manage
Uh, so we can we can't hear you. Oh, from where did I did you did you stop saying hearing me from the question? Eh? No, from somewhere management. from management and science. Management. From management as a science. Yes, they accept. Oh, well, we are saying uh, we want to go through with you in this subject. Remember, we are saying we want to start from the point of view of uh, uh, learning uh, about uh, the subject and applying this into your life. If you can have your uh, life organized, managing your life, managing yourself, then you can be able to manage other people. So what are we going to expect you to learn from here? It says we're going to learn this subject. You put it into your system. You convert the concept into experience. And the abstract, you make them into concrete by systematic approach. Now, systematic approach is uh, the, the, the way in which we are going to follow the outline of our studies. If you are not, uh, if, if you do things haphazard, then you are not a good manager at all. So in that way, it will improve your thinking process. So you've got to think about the way you're going to manage yourself. And in that case, I was saying you should ask yourself these questions. This is where I was to say, am I managing my life daily? And what could be involved in managing your life daily is uh, that uh, you will, well, you have your timetable as a student, you when you wake up, you know the outline of activities that you want to do. Uh, are you disciplined enough that you are able to follow them? Now, if you begin to do that on your own, then you can be able to, impo to, to impose on others how they ought to manage, you ought to manage them, as it were. Because your life is already uh, managed or organized on a daily basis. Ask another another question you're going to ask yourself, have I added values to myself? Uh, what could do, what do we mean by adding value to yourself? Anything that you have learned that make you to be progressed person, that is a valuable thing. Have I set up any goals for me to achieve? Do you have any goals in life of what you want to achieve? Or is it that uh, you got to look at life as it comes, so to speak? Yeah, go, like what people say, ukwalolo muela. So if you find the other people insulting, you just continue, you do that, you join. No goals at all. Now, this thinking process will take you a long way if you be thinking like this. Just those three questions. Those are not exhausted questions, but the three questions are very important. Am I managing my life? Am I adding value to myself? And have I set any goals for me to achieve? I challenge you to think about that. Okay. So, when you're talking about manager, management, it's a set of processes that uh, come to be when you want to achieve something. So the starting point then is to be a destination. What is it that you really want to achieve? So you present your goal. Sometimes, okay, these words goal and objectives are used interchangeably, by the way. Yeah. But a, a, a much of the literature you're going to find is they talking about goals in American sense to mean objective in the British sense. But for the time being, we we'll just use them interchangeably anyway. Then you go to think through. When you have a goal, then you begin to think through how am I going to achieve that goal? And the, one of the ways to achieve those that goal, whether it's individual or organization, then you go to look at what you are calling as input, things that you need to put in place together to help you to achieve what you want to achieve. What are those things? Uh, not exhausted here. 
uh, you were talking about uh, some people that can help you so man machine material money yeah and it can be also the method it can be also the uh and the other aspects that have to do with the inputs that you have around you the facilities around you yeah now your job as a manager is to coordinate this and if you begin to do that even when you are just alone even at home you begin to think about the resources around you and say how can i be able to coordinate this and achieve what i want to achieve then you are heading somewhere yeah so we saying that uh, our life is full of activities through which we constantly try to achieve something for example you you, you you've been at the university you wanted to have that you want to get a job a good job you want to find a wife for example uh, these are some of the things that you always do uh, in life that's what we do can you uh, can are these things in a relationship with the uh, with the with the uh, management or what relationship those are such things that we do on a daily basis go to do with the management anyway they help us those things this is where we start to manage ourselves for example when you talked about uh, saying you'll be looking for a school ah well if you if could children you look for a children a school for your children or your own school so to speak and to do that you got to have a method of how to do it you may need some materials to help you to do that you may need some money to help you to do that so goes with any of these activities that you're talking about okay so uh now if you don't uh, do these things in a scientific way or systematic approach what would be the end result we are saying chaos isn't it yeah there will be chaotic situations that uh, we are we, we are leading to and you, that's what now makes the difference between somebody who's managing or got management principles and somebody doesn't have it's the reduction of that chaos although some people people say the entrepreneurship thrives where there is chaos yeah because they are going to take advantage of you and some people want just to create chaos so that they take advantage of others anyway yeah and therefore uh, to manage is to be smart enough to be able to put these things under ourselves so what are the advantages of learning this subject principles of management one it says our life gets focus and the direction and that's very very important you focus your life and you have a direction and how is that going to happen well you will see when you will be talking about principles of management for example let's look at the second point there you be you know better how to plan and organize your life you see that in your planning and organizing your life you begin to be focused and you have a direction now not many people have directions by the way and not many people have a focus now even yourself as you uh begin to learn in this particular module that's one thing you must begin to be seen organized person person who has a focus and a direction okay we get clarity of thinking and action that's the good thing about this subject yeah you begin to think clearly as a learned person not a person from the street sometimes our stress get reduced tremendously because you can do even stress management 
but that depends on whether you you don't become an workaholic whether you don't become a workaholic sometimes some people go to the other extreme then they, they increase uh, uh they we increase the stress but it must be able to reduce our life becomes purposeful and joyous once you learn the principles of management yeah we start assuming responsibility and accountability for whatever we do. Uh, this is something which a lot of people run away from anywhere. Nobody wants to be accountable <laughs> or to be responsible for anything. How do you feel in a family? You, you are born in a family, you are first born or whatever stage you are in and you see your siblings very irresponsible. And everybody is looking to you as a responsible person. Wow, you will always be under pressure. Because, I mean, why do some younger men just take to drinking? No, because they don't want to be responsible and accountable. They are irresponsible. Because they assume people will be looking to me and... Uh, I don't want, I just want to be looking to somebody who should be giving me what I want. What a shame. Now our behavior towards others and the world improves drastically. We're not scared of taking decisions. Yeah. So even your behavior towards others, you can't be, be behaving like your body the other people content for that much Wow, you begin to speak like a yoke. And this is one of our biggest problems. You are going to run into this when as you go on, as you grow and you start working. Believe me. <laughs> People don't just make decisions. They always want to consult other people, so to speak. Okay. By applying what we learn into skills and action, we grow in our career. Yeah. And that's what we can look forward to. Uh, we can have methods of correcting our mistakes. We all make mistakes. And in accounts, there will be a number of mistakes that we'll be making. But because you are learned, you've learned principles of management, you'll have methods of how to correct those mistakes, so to speak. Yeah. So there are so many, there are so many advantages of learning principles of management. But uh, how can we learn this? We want to know, internalize, and then become a role model. Know the principles of management, internalize them, and remember what we're saying, the way of internalization is to practice them ourselves. To do what we are learning, then we become a role model. And you know what will happen? You take people to help you to achieve your goals. People respect you because you are a role model to them. And that's how, especially the profession of accountants, must be seen like that. In your dressing, in whatever you do, in your talking, in your confidence, in your intelligence, your judgment. Yes, because you believe whatever you're talking, there's a cost, there are figures to eat and things like that. Then you're going to appreciate that this is a nice career that I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm taking. So, as an art management, we're saying, is getting things done by a group of people with effective utilization of variable resources. 
Uh, you may say sometimes, does it have to be a group of people? No, well, we are saying as an art, because it has something to do with the decisions and the way you relate to other people. Uh, a group here stands for two people and above, by the way. So if you're with some other people who might be your subordinates under you, you'll be in a position to do things and achieve those things through them, so to speak. Okay. So when it comes to now management, these are some of the activities of management. It says we'll be talking about the activities and the draft plans, preparing policies, arranging men, money, men, machines, mach materials in order to achieve objectives. So we will be talking more and more about such things. That's what is involved in, in management. Good. Uh -huh. So management is the activity of man who struggles for better living in the complex and competitive world. I'm just thinking, who said these words? Ah, if we forgot to put that quotation. There's one executive who said these words. Says, is the activity of man. And what does this man do? He struggles for better living in the complex and competitive world. So meaning as managers, uh, of course, as a manager, even in a very poor company, <laughs> you can be able to identify who a manager is anyway. Maybe the way they have dressed, isn't it? Uh, maybe they have got a big belly than the rest of other people. Yeah. Or they look smarter than the other people. Then you can say as a, as a manager. And by the way, this is what uh, a lot of people, a lot of us who always think about getting education so that we can work in offices. We think in these lines that I must have a better life, a better living. Yeah. Yeah. Because see, that's what management entails you to do. That way you can influence and lead other people. So it's also an organized effort of people who wants to achieve their objectives and goals for the organization. That's what when we're looking at management. Now you're beginning to see that uh, we are looking at management from different angles up in this aspect now. Eh? Very many different aspects because we are introducing of things that we'll be able to find on the way. Good. Now, let's talk about a few individuals who contributed to this management. After we've talked to, we have talked about uh, how we can organize ourselves and things like that. We're going to talk about a few people that contributed to management and how they also looked at management themselves. So, so far, what we have discussed, any comment, any observation, any any questions? Uh, so, sir, can we see that the uh, principles of management focuses on uh, uh, more like uh, just improving ourselves and building our uh, our lives into a better way, and also uh, improving somehow the communication skills that we have. Well, uh, the way I would answer that question, it should be yes and no. Okay. Yes and no. Now, which one do you want me to start with? Yes or no? <laughs> mm, the no one. No, in the sense that uh, managing, uh, management is not all about yourself. 
is about uh, doing things with other people or through other people. As you're going to see the definition, you're going to look further what other people have said about it. So when you're saying I'm managing or I'm a, I'm a manager, immediately you say I'm a manager, then uh, what comes into our mind is that uh, there are subordinates, there are some people down you who listen oh. to you, who get instructions from you. That's the no part. The yes part is that you cannot do any of those things of managing other people if you don't manage your life. Believe me. Never can you achieve or do anything, even convincing people to do what you want them to do, if you don't manage your life. You manage, your life is reckless, for example. You, there's no difference between a, a floor person or a sweeper or a common person out there with you who are deeming or calling yourself as a manager. So that's why we are saying before you manage others, manage your life, manage yourself, look at yourself. Remember those three very important questions. What have I learned today? What value have I added? What have I done to show that I can, um, I can be a manager or I'm a manager? Am I organizing my life or not? Can I be able to make decisions? Can I be able to influence other people? Very important questions. Yeah. When you'll be seen like a, a, a organized and uh, a well managed person, you manage yourself, it becomes easy to gain respect from others and be able to manage them, so to speak. And that's what you want to do. Okay. Any other question? Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Okay, if there are any no question, let's move on. There are so many gurus. Uh, people have contributed uh, much to management. And uh, is it unfortunate or fortunate is that um, much of the literature that you're going to read and come across um, have not come across yet. Not that they're not there yet where some of the gurus are from, from the continent of Africa. Not never governed themselves. That could be very, very incorrect to say. But much of the literature that we read, you're going to see that it's, we get from other continents of the world. Europe, Asia, and Asia not much, but uh, some of those Asians, uh, number of them, but mainly Europe, America, are the ones that have really contributed and changed the world when it comes to issues of management. So one of them is uh, Frederick W. Taylor, yeah, American individual. So according to him, he says that Management is the art of knowing what you want to do. And then seeing that it is done in the best and the cheapest way. Now, you must understand the time when he was coined in this understanding of management, uh, this is the time when factories were being made. So he says, you must know what you, what you want to do. That's the issue of setting goals now, setting objectives. And then when you do that, see how best can you do it. And the word best there is used to mean, of course, maybe now we can interpret high quality, but at a lower price or cheaply. Then you are a manager, according to him. Okay. 
we will revisit it Taylor. Then there's another gentleman, Henroyo, Henro Fayo, is a French individual, uh, but I think in English is Henry Fayo. Uh, that's the way we, we, we say it. But I'm told is some, is there anybody who speaks French here? Anyone speaking French? Oh, and ne pas vous parlez français. You don't speak French. You're like me. Okay. So we can take it in English is Henry Fayo. Then I'll be, I'm not committing anything wrong. This gentleman too, according to him, he says to manage is to focus and to plan, to organize, to command, to coordinate, and to control. Now, Fayo's, Fayo's approach of management is not more to do with human. It is more to do with scientific. <laughs> okay? And that's why he starts to talk about management in terms of forecasting. He was quite mathematical, this gentleman. And then he talks about it to be planned, to organize, to command, to coordinate, and to control. You're going to see that uh, much of what he said tend to be put into aspect of it uh, of the aspect of the principles of management or functions of management, as you're going to see. Okay. So we can say and say that management is optimal utilization of a variable resources in order to attain certain preset goals and objectives optimal utilization now what are these uh, variable resources you remember what we said about man money machine material methods all these things that's what is referred to as resources available When you say optimum utilization is how you can be able to bring all of these things together proportionally and put them in such a way that they can be able to help you to achieve what you want to achieve. Okay. That's what the file, yeah. I've already said about the optimum, uh, best possible utilization under given circumstances. That's an additional point. Now, somebody also looked at management as a process, and this is uh, McFarland. He says, it is a process by which managers create, direct, maintain, and operate purposeful, no, not purposive, pe yeah, yeah. purposive organization through systematic, coordinated, cooperative human efforts. Wow, this is a mouthful uh, definition that he came up with. Now, look at what he says. He's looking at management from the manager's point of view. Because to him, the people who manage are managers anyway. So what do managers do? They create. They will direct. Yeah. The way they create there is not like they create a business or they create something new. I think it's about the way they come up, they come up with the plans. Because I can argue to say managers ne not necessarily create, creating to mean like coming up with a new product or coming up with a new company, not necessarily. Because you can have your new product, new, your company, then you give somebody to manage it. But the creating is to referring to is the fact that they're able to come up with the plans. Then they direct people. They maintain and operate purposeful or purposive, a purposive organization. Yeah, meaning the organization must have the reason why it is there. And they do that systematic, coordinated, and cooperative of the human efforts. That's according to Mark Farland. Now, uh, the term uh, process uh, 
emphasizes the dynamic or ongoing nature of management, which vary over span of time. Mm -hmm. The process. Because remember who said that it's a process? Let's go back a bit. Uh, here. Do you see what he says here? It's a process by which. Now, when we talk about the process, you are talking about the dynamism of the nature of management, the changes that take place over time. So meaning what? Even when we are talking about the fact that there are principles of management, generally, that we know, which tend into uh, functions like planning and things like that, those things are not static and they are not even a cast and paste or cast and stone. No, they are changing. They are dynamic. That's the thing you must appreciate. Yeah. So management is a very exciting field to say the least. <laughs> it's quite, many, uh, quite interesting actually. And you will learn everything, uh, nearly everything. No, no, you, near, you learn nearly uh, new things every now and then. Nearly every now and then you are able to learn new things. What about the dynamic nature? It implies the changes that take place in the organizational life. Yeah, uh, I can give you an example. Even the, the, the school where you have come to, Cavendish, as you you admired it and, and you came to Cavendish. It's changed over time. And for a short period or a period that I've been around here over 10 years myself, I can tell you that the many changes that I've seen. Yeah, not only top management, middle management, even in terms of the, uh, in terms of the structures of the courses have changed. Uh, uh, they now we, here we are forced by outside forces that have changed. We can't meet the students. We are now on uh, Google, if you like. And we are all learning how can we manage these changes? How can we ensure that we embrace these changes and move on? Otherwise, life, life will come to a standstill anyway. That's what management should do. That's what you should do as a manager. Be able to adapt and change with circumstances and time. Okay, so is the, as this is like an example, or is a statement of truth actually, which says that a business fell and become bankrupt because managers fell to, to uh, fell in their attempt to cope with the change with the change. I mean, uh, let's just take an example of COVID-19 as an example. Even when I, if I was to ask you which companies you know that have really like almost closed because of this COVID-19, you'll be able to point one or two of such companies or really they've just drastically gone down. You'll be able to point at one or two let me take one generally, the general one that I, I, you, you may agree with me. Talk about the people who are selling beer, for example, bar owners and things like that. Where is their business? Oh, well, closed. You know, one thing they forgot is that the, 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 the authorities closed the premises for beer. But did they say that Zambians stopped drinking? You have you stopped drinking, you guys? Some of you, that's when you are drinking heavily now. Because you have nothing to do. You just stay at home. Watch TV and things like that. And all you do is just drink, drink, drink. So, what does it tell us? Many are the bar owners 
crying foul, so to speak. No, our business is closed. Now we have nothing, nothing to do. And that, that, and they hate that busy. People are busy drinking. Yeah, think about it. If you're the manager, your business owners, and things like that, you have just failed to adapt or to cope with the change. So the question you can ask yourself is, what can I do? What are others doing that is making them survive? If anything, as I said, people now are drinking more than ever. <laughs> so follow them. Let them not follow you. That's a principle you can think about. Good. Another aspect is some individuals like... Uh, I don't know how to pronounce their good names. I only know Gibson here. Donali, Gibson, Eva, Eva Sevik. Uh, you can see these are coming from Machek's countries and things like that. Then they said uh, it's about management, it's about coordination. And for them, they said as a process, management is as a process, but that process requires coordination. That's where the emphasis is. That's the much of their contribution, talking about management. Good. Then uh, other individuals like Dan, Stephen, and Kelly look at management as a function, as a function. And this is, a, this is quite prominent up to now. You're going to see this as we move on. And we say that management is a role which includes a set of duties, responsibilities, and relationships involved in work organizations. And when you're talking about duties and responsibilities, this is what we are calling as function or functions which managers perform. So that's the way in which they appreciated the issue of who? Mm. No. Okay. Sorry, I was answering a question somebody might have heard he was asking me. So that's what uh, uh, their contribution is in terms of management, the way they are looking at management, looking at it as a function. Yeah. Uh, so the duties, the responsibilities that you carry out as a manager is what they're calling as a good. But this is a, a very common definition which a lot of people use. Yeah. When they say management is getting things done through other people. Now, others have extended this, by the way. They would say, is getting things done through other people, by other people, with other people. Mm -hmm. You might say they have copied from the term democracy. Well, why not? If that can help. <laughs> but it's a very common, yeah. So the information on the PowerPoint is not changing. What do you mean? What are you seeing now? What is there now? Can you read for me? Dynamicity yes, changes the height of organization life. That's what I'm seeing in this time. Okay, everybody, you seeing that, sir? Me, for me, I'm seeing your name, sir. What are you using? Is it a phone or you're using a computer? I'm using a phone. You're using the phone. Yeah, yeah. Okay, others, is there anything, anybody, sorry, whom we, we, we are together? No, sir, we can't see. No, we can't see, sir. There's only the dynamic nature in Christ that change its reality. Uh, then it, then it, it means, uh, but you can hear my voice. Yes, sir. Yeah, but, uh, I'm, I'm still sharing, and 
it is showing that I'm sharing. Let me stop sharing. Okay. Mm -hmm. How is it? Can you see that? Can you see where we are? Yes. Okay. I don't know. Uh, these things works with waves and things like that. But for me, it's like uh, when I change like this, let me try. If I do like this, can you be able to see it? Yes, we are seeing that. You've seen the changes, yeah. eh? Yeah, I can even see there that it's moving. So I don't know why it was not moving. Anyway, let's say let's say start from here. Or move from here, otherwise we'll never finish. It says management is getting things done through other people. I was saying people have expanded on this one uh, to include now to say that uh, Management is getting things done through other people, by other people, and with other people. So as a manager, you have to work with other people. Or you let others also do their job. And uh, you achieve the whatever you want to achieve through uh, those people. So efficient management is the lifeboat of any developed business. Uh, if I can pause there, what do you think it means when they say that efficient management is the lifeboat of any developed business? What do you think that means? I think what it means, um, since it's saying efficient or for a business to be developed, meaning it's supposed to be managed and that management is not just supposed to be something mere but it's supposed to be efficient so it's more like adds life to the business thus making it develop okay okay thank you Agnes, well, what do you think to add on the, what i think is that uh because the way it is the term efficient Mm -hmm. By efficient, I mean it's not only getting things done, mm -hmm. but getting things faster, done faster as soon as possible and move on to the future. That, that is what I understand by efficient management. It's oh, okay. uh, a tool that is used to get things done at a faster rate. That's what no. I understand, sir. Kareb, the way uh, you, yes, the, the way you've used the faster, it means effective. The way you have explained when you said about faster, <laughs> it's being effective. But what about being efficient? What does it mean? Nice it's not about money. being faster, but it's about being something. What is that? Others? If you had used the word to say achieving those things cheaply, I was going to agree to say yes, then we are talking about efficiency. And uh, to be cheaply is not the same as uh, being faster. Sometimes you can be faster and expensive. And in most cases, if you want things to be done faster for you, you have to pay more anyway. <laughs> or it will cost you a little bit more. But there is also a way in which you can make things faster and cheap. 
you get it eh yeah so let's do the opposite of what you said so efficient is about uh, not to be wasteful to be able to control costs to be able to achieve these things in a cheaper way because in, in, you know in any business you don't want to do business which is expensive otherwise you're not going to make money anyway you want to do things that minimizes the cost and uh, makes you to achieve what you want to achieve yeah but what do you think about this term that management is the life you bought what's your understanding of that term or what's your appreciation of that term Uh, me have understood like it is what propels and the development any development what what drives what guides efficient uh, efficient management is okay okay uh -huh. by the way is that your complete name dq or is abbreviated ali it's complete, it's the complete one. It's the complete one. So complete. how do you pronounce it? You can uh, pronounce it Dick or Dick. Oh, you accept both. Yes. Okay, good. So Dick or Dick. <laughs> if you were... If you were in my country where I come from, mm. it's supposed to be deck. Uh, uh, that Q is pronounced uh, uh, with, a, with a deep Q, 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 you know, that kind of thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, mean? but anyway, mm. yeah, I've learned something. Dick, Dick Ali. Yeah. Oh, Dick Ali. Yes. Now, Deki Ali, you've seen the uh, you've seen the symbol for PFK. Yes. Uh, what's their symbol? It's a porch. Uh, Pabuato. And the people voted for them. Why? They. I don't know. They. I think they got from that. Uh, about you know the story related to know how at what something like mm -hmm. that I think <laughs> a story related to what eh? Noah uh, oh Noah Noah oh okay yeah that's a very good uh, uh that's so, a very good connection as well I didn't think about that but that's thank you for reminding like, no so uh huh more like they 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 say that uh, if you are not, if you don't vote for us, it's like you'll be left behind, something like that. Also, jump onto the boat, then you survive, isn't it? Survive. Because... For us, survive. Come again? It's more like that. Yeah, I thought so also. Because as you have wrote that very important aspect, Ali, uh, that Noah, God instructed him to make an ark. Yeah. And that ark became a lifeboat. Why lifeboat? Because it preserved the lives of humans as well as animals. True. Now, think about that the same Ali and the rest of you. It says for in any business and for that business to develop, management is like that boat. Okay. Uh -huh. It's like that boat. And that boat must carry people. Make them survive. Make them prosper. And that boat must be efficient. Okay? Now, that boat, life okay. boat must be able to carry, to make your business to be developed, to be successful. I like the emphasis in terms of what management can you do to business. 
And no wonder there's a connection with the, the one there, if you say, when it says getting things through other people. Now, you got to get these people on that boat and they help you to achieve what you want to achieve. So it's not a boat that is going to sink you, but it's a boat that is going to save you because it's a lifeboat. I'm sure you have appreciated that point, isn't it? Yeah. Indeed. That's what management should be. And that's how people will be looking to you, by the way. Can you imagine if there's a crisis, everybody's going to look to you as a manager. My manager, what are we going to do about this? Then you say, ah, I'm also confused. I don't know anything. If anything, this thing is stupid. I can't do anything about it. <laughs> you are going to sink with the rest of your people. And when you sink the people, you sink the business. Then you're going to say, you don't deserve to be a manager. Okay. You remember we talked about the five M's? I mean, we have made a, uh, we have alluded to this and we're calling these as the resources of the company or inputs as we have called them. One of them we are saying man. So what are we looking at when we are saying man as a resource? We'll be looking at the qualifications, how trained this person, skilled or experienced or the competence that this, this, this man has. And that is very important for management. Yeah, if you're going to employ anybody as a man, we are not just employing bodies, people just there, and you count them to say, we have 10 people. No, it's about their skills, their knowledge, their contribution, their competence, their experience, and things like that, that you, you are counting on. Then you're talking about machines, it's another uh one of the aims you are here we are talking about uh, capable machines and equipment that can help us to do things in the best way and the cheaper way because machines are there to do that for us yeah that's the point we want to 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 emphasize there then you are now talking about the uh, uh, materials you want to be looking at its quantity quality availability how much it costs on the market and the, whether we can be near the raw materials or we can transport them, how do we get these finished goods to the market? All those are vital questions which managers must be able to answer when you're talking about materials. Number four, when you're talking about money, you want to find a way of how to look for money and how you're going to employ that money or deploy that money and how that money is going to help you to run your business. That's very, very important as a man. Manager, these are the things very much to advise. Yeah, you play a major role in this aspect of money. Yeah. Okay. And that's the way you want to ensure that he, uh, you make your company successful. The number five, methods. How we are going to do things. Which method should we adopt? And that those methods must be according to their costs. You want a cheaper method, easy method, simple method. Uh, the one that everybody can easily follow, but at the same time, it should be a method which should give you ultimate, out, uh, optimum best results that you're looking at okay good so that's about uh, uh, the five m's in the business which we're calling as resources as well mm -hmm. now there's an emphasis that to help us appreciate this especially in the modern times it says uh i hope we'll, You've seen it's moved, eh? Okay, it's moved. That the methods, sometimes we call them techniques or systems, they can help a company to have a competitive urge. To have a competitive urge. Meaning, for example, you can all be in the same business, but just the way 
the methods you read you you use to deliver that product to achieve those objectives will always be different it will never it's very rare that they will be the same yeah you can all be selling the same product one is making money the other one is making losses and that's where the the, the difference of being managers or not managers is is can be seen okay so management is very essential at every level of organization whether we are talking about middle i mean lower management middle management and upper management upper level now lower is about supervisors by the way lower then the middle these are like uh, marketing managers chief accountants finance managers human resource managers those tend to be then the upper level this is where you find the directors now we are talking about a formal kind of arrangement eh, of organization yeah so now at every level whether supervisory middle management there or functional management and top management at every level management is very important to be practiced and the management can be applied to small and large organizations yeah small and large organizations it's applicable and sometimes you find you will ask questions in the exam about how can you apply uh, management principles to a small company and we even give say cantemba uh, what kind of management principles can you apply there people tend not to think that they have any management role in those, in those areas and then they fail to explain what can be done yeah it's as good as the way you're going to see in the large organizations like uh, le the largest now in zambia is which one idc uh, industrial development corporation uh, because it's an apex which is looking after other companies which are parastato companies for the well, Zambif is another big company actually and there are so many other big companies around management can also apply to profit and non-profit organizations profit these are commercial entities uh people that are in business of uh making money and those ngos are known as non-profit organizations you can apply management principles to manufacturing organizations or service rendering organizations so any of those at a personal at a personal level if you are a person who is capable of undertaking the tasks and functions of managing at any level in any kind of enterprise you have leadership qualities and you have qualities of an administrator did you hear that you as a person you are capable of undertaking the tasks and functions of managing at any level in any kind of enterprise you have leadership qualities you have qualities of administrator then you will become a good manager and we can't overemphasize that we have already said about we need to begin to manage ourselves before we can manage us others we need to internalize the qualities of what the manager should look like it should be like yeah it should be respected so a good manager is expected to have ability of four skills yeah although there are some people that have argued against this but let's follow this first for the time being uh, there are people who have done researches and researches and such so do you have to according to them you have to have technical skills human skills conceptual skills and ability to solve problems that's what a manager is technical is when like you guys you're going to learn uh, you're going to learn accountancy that is a technical skill human skill is the way you're gonna be relating to other people motivating them and thing like that conceptual skills is being able to understand the principles that you can be able to apply in your managing and the ability to solve problems you must be able to make decisions and solve those problems okay 
so the whole idea starts with uh, setting the goals and then work towards achieving those goals. Now, you, you, we will talk about setting these goals, how easy or difficult it is in setting the goals. Yeah, it's, believe me, it's not an easy thing. And because we know that the goals must be smart. What do you mean by smart? Goals must be uh, specific. We must be specific in our goal. For example, if somebody say, I want to become a manager, that is not a goal. I want to become a manager. That is not a goal. What do you think that is? It's a wish, actually, and not a goal. That's a wish, because it's not specific. So what you want to do is, what do you want to achieve or accomplish in an organization? Organization setup. What do you really want to achieve? OK? That could be a goal. OK. Then it must be measurable. Uh, when it is quantitative, it's easy to measure. Uh, for example, in the, in the exam, you can aim at 95% of the marks. Then you can measure 95%. One which becomes a challenge sometimes to measure directly is that to do with the quality. How do you measure quality? It's the same as how do you measure love? You guys, can you measure love? How do you measure love? Can't. Hmm? You can't measure, sir. You can't measure love? It's invisible and and uh, feeling. Why would you say it's impossible? Okay, let me ask you, ladies. How many ladies do you have here? Estella, hey, you are the one just next to Dick. Dick, you or D Dick? You. Estella. Yes, sir. Can you measure love? I think yes. You can How would you it. measure it? How would you measure it? Through the actions, like Jesus Christ gave. Uh, the Bible says, "Love is never love until you give it away." So the moment you give it away, then you have love. So you can measure love in that way. Oh, okay. Ah, uh -huh. you were trying to tell us about uh, before you quickly went in. You think Jesus loved, eh? How would you measure the love of Jesus? <laughs> the love of Jesus can eh? be measured by what he gave, his actions. Oh, okay. The actions that Jesus he, The actions that Jesus did, eh? Okay. You know, I have asked about ladies. Yes. Because you ladies are the ones that can that really know how to measure love. <laughs> I don't know whether that is true or not. Mm -hmm. We which other which other ladies here? Uh, which other lady? Karen, Karen, you are a lady. And you? Yes, sir. Uh, tell us. Okay. How, I, how would you measure love? I think, uh, just as she said, I, I believe love is more of verbal than just a feeling. Because uh, it's not figurative. Definitely, mm -hmm. there are no units in which we can measure love. But by the actions mm -hmm. someone portrays, I guess you can measure, yeah, according to your standards, how you consider love to be. Oh, okay, and I, I, I want to ask you what what do you mean by actions anyway? Mm -hmm. 
Eh? Eh, there you are, you are laughing. <laughs> Priska. Priska. Priska, yes, are you sir. are you are you there? You are a lady, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I thought so. So tell me, how do you measure love? But I think the word the <laughs> I think what I said is correct because um sir, okay. let me give an example. If um let's say I'm going out with this guy. Uh -huh, which but guy? Then, it's, it's an example. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. So yes, why can't you say you are going out with this Mwanza? No, I'm just joking. <laughs> okay. What would yes. you want to make? How would Mwanza show you that he loves you? Um. Basically, men they have undivided attention. While us ladies, we have divided attention. So I'm going out with this guy, but then this guy has got a side chick. I'll be able to know, reason being his attention will be diverted to that other lady. That's why they have undivided attention. But for us ladies... Oh, no, no, no. When you're saying undivided is the opposite. You are, say, you are saying divided, isn't it? Yes. Hello? Yeah. So there are many are divided. Am I right? No. No, sir. Men, it's undivided because um, you would find that mm. a lady, sir, she can have many guys, mm -hmm. but yet um, show mm. it to you that uh, you're just the only guy there. Whereas oh, for men, if you're I cheating, see, I see, I see, I see. You'll, be, uh -huh. you'll be able to tell. Oh, mm, I didn't know that party. Wow. Yes. Imagine at my age, I didn't know that part. That's very interesting. Oh, and you have taught me something. Honest, oh. honest, Priska. I didn't know that part. I thought men are the ones who are divided. They, they want to go to this, but you are very correct. You remind me uh, one experience. Yeah. Do you know why in South Africa men women tend to be killed mostly times? No, cheated. Because yeah, the, the same the same thing that you have said, Priska. Now you have given me the answer. You know, there was one experience I will never forget. This girl is with a boyfriend, and uh, she receives a, a, a phone call, and she's on the chest of this guy, and answering the call to another boy, and started telling her or telling him things. Which are not true. <laughs> Leaning on the chest of this okay. other guy. Now you can imagine. Wow. And it's exactly what you said. And the other guy is believing her. And this guy also is believing her. And when She's they a meet. Liar, is that what you are now telling me, uh, Priska? Uh, it's not only me, I'm sure. That's what you're telling the class. <laughs> that's what you are, we are learning from <laughs> you. Interesting. That's how you manage. That's a, yeah, it is very interesting, and that's how they manage. Yeah, you can see the management style. That's how they manage. Ah, uh -huh. okay. Hey, we may have cheated, eh? No, that's just an example. No. Okay. No. Yeah. Uh, let's come back now to measurement. What, why am I asking all these questions? Was that to find out from you so that you can appreciate that there are certain things which are qualitative, difficult to measure. But the only way we measure, we use what you can call an indirect method of measurement. An indirect method of measurement. Yeah. So uh, something derivative to that which we want to measure, can you be able to tell us? And that thing which you want to drive from it must be quantitative enough. Yeah, quantitative enough. And then you can measure that. For example, if you want to measure water, you want to measure the quality of water, for example, 
you may want to use in terms of um, uh, how many gems are found there. You want to use in terms of uh, uh, color, what color is found there. You want to make, you know, those, those are the things at the end of it, then the son you describe us. Uh -huh. Just like love, Jesus died for us. And you can measure that with death. Yes. He died, what? And we are told he died because he loved us. Yeah. So that's the point we're talking about. Okay, that's what we mean by measurable. The next is achievable. Because you have got the resources that are limited, you can't do anything. There's an example here to say, uh, if you want to buy a flat in Mumbai, you have only 10,000 rupees, it is not possible to buy that flat. Because there, the flats are very, very expensive. So you cannot be achieve, able to achieve that. Why? Because the resources you might not uh, uh, allow you. Then it talks about the realistic, says the, the goal must be realistic, meaning we cannot just be dreaming. Uh, no, my next time I'm just going to be a president of this country, of this, uh, no, president of, you, have, you haven't even started the campaigning, you don't even have a political party, and then you know that, no, I'm just dreaming. It's not a realistic. And the time bound. There should be a time limit uh, when this thing is going to be done. And that's the way you set your goals. Uh, by the way, in, 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 in British, we said that's the way we set your objectives. Good. Let's say, go towards the conclusion now. We are saying importance of management. Uh, management should be able to meet the change of, I mean, meet the challenge of change. We have emphasized about change that take place due to maybe external factors or dynamic factors. So managers must be able to meet that. You must be able to accomplish your goals through other people so to speak. Your management is the one that should do effectively utilize the resources that they have. It must also have effective functioning of business. <sighs> we'll be looking to you as managers to help us to do that. You should be able to help us to develop our resources. You should be able to help us to have a sound organization structure. You should be able to direct the organization where it's supposed to go. Yeah, then you are a manager, eh? Integrates various interests of different people. Then you are a manager. It utilizes the, uh, it stabilizes the fluctuations. What that means is that, uh, you know, when things are not going well, ups and down, you as a manager, you must stabilize them. Yeah. It must be, you must be innovative enough. That's another point. It should, it's about coordination and team spirit. I like the team spirit part of it anyway. And we'll talk about this as we move on. You've got to be solving problems and tackling them. Don't run away from them. Make decisions as managers. So, Management is also a tool for person, personality development. Remember that we talked about uh, the importance of you being organized and being a manager. Then you can, I mean, how to manage yourself, then you can manage other people. So personally, that's how you develop. And we'll be looking forward when you can develop as, as a person, as a manager. And that's Thank what you. we're looking forward to. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, how do you say thank you, Ali, in your mother tongue? Shukran. Shukran. Okay, Shukran. Okay. Lebutke Shuk. Oh, okay. Lebutke Shuk. <laughs> so, uh, guys, Shukran, Tanki, mm -hmm. Klebuile, Sancho. <laughs> Whatever language is. Uh, any questions before we leave then? Richard? Uh, 
Richard, you have something? Oh, okay. Any anyone? I think so. we're asking for the notes. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, who is the class rep? Karen, sir. Karen, you must be able to send me your can you do that now? Send me send me your your mail so before i leave i can quickly organize and give you my school email or personal yeah. email, no, no school 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 email okay the yeah. one which is cavendish isn't it okay then from there you can be able to uh you'll be able to uh yeah to send it to your friends. Sir. Yeah. So can I send it on, on WhatsApp? Because the thing is that typing it, I can make a mistake, missing out one figure. So I just want to copy and paste. Do that quickly. Okay. Can you please send us uh, the, the video? The network was keeping at some point during the lesson. This deep, Ali. You come. You should come and teach me. How do I send this thing, guys? Come again. Come and teach me. How do I send this thing? Uh, not really sure, but uh, I'm sure there are methods that other lecturers were using. So I think you can consult from them. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let me consult them then. Okay. I'll consult them. Once okay. I consult them, yeah, then you can be able to. Thank you. Aye. So appreciate okay thanks Happy yeah yeah day. yeah okay thanks good day to everyone as i'm waiting for uh the, the, the i'm waiting for the uh, email address then i can be able to send thank you thank you sir Guys, this man is very interesting. Mr. Verenga, is that a recommendation? Yes, Mr. Verosofa. Yes, I can see also it's interesting. <laughs> and the course sounds to be simple. How is it? Great. <laughs> this is not the, uh, these courses, you should do it. It's just like the same as the uh, business communication. It is full of notes. Oh, that, that's the bad part then. But we will save. Please can tell us, tell us, Mr. Goffrey. How do you manage the group? <laughs> to have many guys, tell us, please. Give us some more, some more so that we can make our girls and us. What about that? was just an example. Mr. Kabaso is just listening to us. What? I was saying, Mr. Gawasso, it's just listening. <laughs> yes, it's an example, guys. Don't take it, uh, I don't know, to have to something. Mr. Bering, the truth is what you say, guys. And she cannot 
just to say without experience oh. Yeah, she cannot say without experience. It is only experience that she has said that. Now, Mr. Willing, who just make it when we say it between the two? That is the issue. I can't even get you. I think network is tripping. Come again. I'm telling you, uh, like we have got that group. Okay, welcome. We've got that group where we we've created with the view of discussing. Why can't you just uh, create a Zoom link so that we can be meeting using that very Zoom with the three of us? I think uh, if it's possible, I think you can create and give us the password. Okay. Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you. Who was wise? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. What time is it? Come again. <laughs> 